Deep in the North Carolina woods, it looks like this work crew is clearing underbrush or gathering firewood. But they're actually collecting the raw materials to build something incredible. Something like this, a forest king's castle, a hedge full of faces, a twisting maze, all woven branch by branch, twig by twig, the grand designs of sculptor Patrick Doherty. If you stick it in here like this, you can... Also known as the stick man. What's the feeling that you're trying to evoke in here, in these passageways? I want people to feel a sense of exploration. You know, you're kind of in another place and been transported through the forest curtain back to the Garden of Eden. Paradise found for fans of all ages. Oh, it is going to be fun. Yesterday, we were overwhelmed with children. Kids love them, but so does the art world. Doherty's won both the Henry Moore and National Endowment for the Arts Fellowships. He's even been the subject of a documentary called Bending Sticks. Generally, it takes about a tractor trailer load of sticks to make a big piece. Maybe that's six tons of sticks. I don't know, that's a lot of sticks. His creations seem to have a universal appeal. They draw people in. I don't really feel like Patrick needs an interpreter for his work, and I think that is really the power of it, is that you don't need someone to explain it to you. Linda Johnson is the chief curator at the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh. A lot of people look at it and say things like, I don't like art, but I like this. We caught up with him as he built the 256th of his creations, what he calls his stick works. Where are you at in this process right now? We're in our beginning of our third week, so it takes 21 days to build something. This one's at the North Carolina Botanical Garden in Chapel Hill. You have to explain this sort of drawing to me. This represents kind of three intersecting passageways that make a bit of a knot in the tradition of kind of a, a hedge knot garden. In this, in this case, the uh, hedges are big enough to walk through. Here, as everywhere he goes, here, here's what be what we'll do. Local volunteers come out of the woodwork to spend three intense weeks laboring by his side. You know, sometimes people say, well, how do your volunteers know what to do? And I said, well, we've all been children, and we just know everything there is to know about sticks. That was our first building materials. Everyone's had the childhood experience of playing with sticks, and it didn't take that long to reignite those, uh, those ultimate urges. You can cut off of these smaller bunches if you need to. At each installation, Doherty acts not only as sculptor, but team coach for his volunteers. Drive them back up underneath okay. there. And it doesn't work on the big ones, but on the little ones, it'll work out pretty good. Wouldn't it be a lot easier to just do all this yourself? I mean, you're it essentially... It would definitely not be as much fun. You know, we have people of every age. We could have the grandmother and the hippie and the biker chick and the... Uh, somebody all working together in a big crew, and that mix of people, it adds a lot to the energy of the sculpture. You can't help but want to pick up a stick and give it a try. This is the end you want to stick in the wall. He makes it sound so easy. There you go. That'll be good. Just push it on in there. Yep, twisting is good. You know, I didn't, I didn't work out today, but I don't now. I don't have to. And you do this, how many times? Day. Thousands and thousands. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of determination that has driven Doherty to churn out nine mammoth stick works each year for nearly 30 years all over the world. Yeah, I've worked in the rain numerous times in Ireland and Scotland and worked in the cold in Wisconsin or, you know, Denmark or Austria or Italy. And sometimes I have to use translators, but usually sticks become the universal language. The universal language of sticks and love. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, my wife and I, we met uh, through sculpture. His wife, the museum curator, Linda Johnson Doherty. I mean, it was really love at first sight. She's been watching him pick up sticks for 22 years. Is there a work that's particularly close to your heart? I mean, he is your husband. <laughs> Um, there is a beautiful piece that he did that looks like Bramante's Tempietto. It's like this little 
classical temple made out of sticks and I wanted him to make me one at home and he hasn't done it. You don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. Like wives everywhere, her project is at the bottom of a very long to-do list. How far in advance are you booked? Booked to, through 2016 at the moment. So We're starting to take a few in 2017. That's two years. That's two years and we get um, offers every day. The kind of offers that museums make for original works of art to keep in their permanent collections, something they'll never be able to do with Doherty's works. They only last a couple of years, and Doherty says that's part of the point. There's a way that you look at this work and care about it and care for it, knowing that it's not going to exist because you know what's going to happen to sticks. I mean, you see a stick and you, you kind of know that it's like a leaf. It's going to break down. Something's going to happen. It's going to blow away. But you know, in the sense, the, the most powerful part of it is that it's not lasting. And uh, we all recognize that we have a limited lifespan ourselves. Does it pain you as an artist to see it deteriorate? It doesn't currently because I'm working on a new piece. You know, so I'm, I'm on, already on to the next piece. I always say that art history has to look after itself and the art artists should just make what they want to make.